Okay, so we march on through our look at fractions, and the next logical place to go would be how do we add them, how do we subtract them, particularly because they all look so different. How can we add things that look different? So uh, if I can, how do we add one half to one third? That's not helpful. How do I know how long that is? One half plus one third, how do I know how long that is? I don't. And so what we do from a modeling standpoint is we decide not to use halves or thirds. We decide to break up the half and break up the third into smaller portions that we can compare easily. Uh, and so we decide to use sixths. We decide to use sixths because one half is three sixths and one third is two sixths. So now we have something that we can use. We can say that one half plus one third is the same as three sixths plus two sixths. And that's one, two, three, four, five sixths. So the rule that we have where you got to get a common denominator, that's not arbitrary. That allows us to compare across the fractions using a smaller piece that's useful in both cases. So this whole deal of, oh, you got to get a common denominator when you add or subtract, it comes from somewhere. Uh, subtracting works the same way. Uh, if we had one third and we looked to subtract one fourth, well, how big, oh mercy, how big is that gap? One third minus one fourth, how big is that gap? Well, again, we go to a piece that is. that is useful in both cases. So the 1 12th, well, how many 1 12ths are there in 1 third? There are, in theory, four of them. This is a terrible drawing. And how many 1 12ths are there in 1 fourth? Well, in theory, there are three of them. And so what's the gap? The gap is 1 12th. So it's not just, oh, we're looking to subtract and we need some common denominator and that common denominator is going to be 12. That's not an arbitrary choice. That's let's break the one third and the one fourth into a smaller piece that can be used to compare these two quantities. One third is the same as four twelfths. One fourth is the same as three twelfths. Now we can compare how much more is four twelfths than three twelfths. Well, one twelfth is the difference. So when we do questions that say, well, let's add uh, two fifths plus one third, well, we got to think about five and three. What can I divide a fifth and a third into that will, will allow us to compare? And so we choose the least common multiple. Uh, because five and three have no factors in common, we can use just their product. Uh, two fifths, how many fifteenths is that? Well, we divided each of these pieces into three smaller parts. So we divide each of these pieces into three parts each. And then over here, we divided each third into five smaller pieces. So we divide the one we want into five smaller pieces. And that lets us add, we've got it. 
subtraction is no different uh, if we're going to do four fifths minus one fourth we decide that we're going to split the fifths and the fourths into a smaller piece, what would that smaller piece be? It would be 20. The, the fifths each get divided into four smaller pieces. So the ones we want also get divided into four smaller pieces. The Fourths each get divided into five smaller pieces, so the one we want is also divided into five smaller pieces. So if we have 16 twentieths and subtract five twentieths, that is 11 over 20. Okay, uh, you should practice. So hit the pause button and make sure that you can do, uh, uh, no, let's not do sixths here. Let's do ninths here. And then let's try, uh, let's see, seven eighths minus uh, one third. Give that a go. Hit the pause button. See what happens. Did it look something like that? Here's hoping that it did. Um, adding and subtracting fractions is something all little children learn. Hopefully the ones you teach will learn it well because of the way you can explain.